Hello student. Uh, welcome to our second lesson. This is necessity or significance or you can say importance of classification. We have defined classification as the grouping of living organisms based on their structures. Organisms with the similar or the same structures are placed in one group called a taxon. And several groups are called taxa. So the science of classification or the study of classification is known as taxonomy. Those scientists who study taxonomy are referred to as taxonomists. Taxonomy involves placing of organisms into groups also known as taxa and giving them names. So, therefore, classification is important because of the following reasons. One, it is to be able to identify organisms into their taxonomic groups for reference, that is for future use. It is also important because it shows the evolutionary relationship in different organisms. So it shows the, how organisms evolved or arose from their ancestors. So you can relate the structures of the present day organisms and those of the ancestors and draw some evolutionary relationship. Groupings brings together living organisms with similar characteristics as at the same time separating those with different characteristics. Classification also helps us arrange information about living organisms in an orderly manner to avoid chaos and confusion that would rise, arise if this were to be done um, arbitrarily. So we need to avoid chaos and confusion in all manner by classifying living organisms. Let us now look at the historical background of classification. Earlier, or in the early time, classification was artificial. Since the placing of organisms into groups was placed on few observable features, which were personal conveniences to early biologists like Aristotle, who lived between 384 and 322 BC. At that time, organisms were grouped into two main groups, plants and animals. And plants were further grouped as herbs, shrubs, and the animals on the other side were grouped into several groups, namely carnivores, or those animals that feed on flesh, uh, herbivores, uh, those organisms that feed on vegetation, and omnivores, uh, those animals that feed on both flesh and vegetation. Some biologists classified plants as edible and non-edible, uh, fungi and even bacteria. There came Swedish biologist called Carolus Linnaeus, who pioneered the modern classification which has overcome the weakness of the artificial classification. In modern classification, it uses evolutionary relationship between the organisms and their ancestors. So from the original parents, there arose new groups or individuals that underwent structural modification or what we call evolution that have enabled them to live in different habitats. So it is believed actually that the, the, the modern day uh, continents were a single landmass 
but because of some changes called the continental drift, the, the world split into the current continents we have and organisms occupied various continents and they, in those regions they went, they underwent modification so that they can occupy those uh, different parts. We shall also discuss this uh, in the topic of evolution. In modern classification, organisms are uh, placed in groups called taxa and are assigned scientific names. Remember, these uh, structural changes led to diversity of living organisms or uh, the diversity we are seeing today. And what are these major units of classification or the taxonomic groups? So taxonomy, we have said, is the study of the characteristics of organisms for the purpose of grouping them. Groups are, the groups are taxa, and if they are singular or one, we call it a taxon. And the grouping is based on easily observable characteristics that are common in the group. In the classification scheme, hierarchy of organisms or groups is recognized because it proceeds from the largest or the highest group that is the kingdom to the smallest and the lowest unit which is the species so remember the kingdom will always have the highest number of organisms and the species will occupy or will hold the least number of organisms so let us look at these groups in descending order that is from the largest to the smallest we have the kingdom or well, then next to the kingdom is phylum in uh, plants but for animals i mean for animals it is the phylum for example phylum codata phylum arthropoda but for the case of plants we use division below that is class then followed by order family genus and finally species as the lowest rank so kingdom is made up of several phyla in animals or divisions in plants and it is the largest taxonomic unit in classification then followed by phyla or division a number of classes with similar characteristics will make up the phylum or uh, plural is phyla in animals and in plants it is a division then followed by classes that share a number of characteristics that make up a class then below the class is the order which comprises a number of families having common characteristics then a family is made up of number of genera that share several characteristics then genus in plural genera a genus is made up of a number of species sharing several characteristics and members of a genus cannot interbreed and if they do though so the offspring will always be in fertile for example, you might have heard uh, that maybe a donkey and a horse breeding to give a mule. The mule is always infertile. Then we have the species, which is the smallest unit of classification, and organisms of the same species resemble each other or they look alike. The number of chromosomes in the in their cells is the same and the most important thing about species is that they interbreed to give rise to a fertile offspring then within the members of a species are small differences that are observed these include 
skin color in human beings and variation in plants. So you can look at this. For example, we have uh, uh, kingdom as the taxonomic unit in this side and then animals on this or organisms on this side. For example, kingdom animalia. Uh, we have example human beings and dog. They belong to phylum Chordata. They have a backbone or notochord. All of them, the two animals are uh, belong to class Mammalia because they best feed their young ones. But the order is different. Human beings belongs to order uh, primate family hominidae genus Homo and the species sapiens. So the scientific name is Homo sapiens. Just look at this one for the dog. For example, the plants, uh, the plants we have, they belong, maize and beans belong to kingdom plantae. They are flowering plants, hence division spermatophyta. But maize have or has one cotyledon. They belong to class monocotyledonae. Beans have two cotyledons. Beans belongs to class dicotyledonae. The order is different, family is different, genus is just that one. And when it comes to maize, the genus is Z, the species is maize, then the scientific name is Z maize. And you can see these scientific names are italicized. So basically organisms are grouped into five kingdoms. We have Monera, Protoctista, Fungi, Plantae, and finally Animalia. Uh, in kingdom Animalia, the organisms are multicellular. They have several cells and they do not make their own food. Therefore, they depend on plants or other animals. Hence, they are heterotrophic. Example of animals include annelids or earthworms. We have snails, arthropods, which basically comprises of insects, uh, uh, ticks, all those, and chordates. So arthropods include the ticks, uh, butterflies, among others. And then we have the chordates, uh, the fish, frogs, and humans. Then in kingdom plantae, they are also multicellular. And they are autotrophic, that is, they make their own food. They include bryophyta, that in example is the most plant. Then we have the, the, the pteridophyta, that is the farms. And then we have the spermatophyta, or those organisms that bear uh, seeds. So you can see, uh, in the kingdom plantae, we have three divisions. Bryophyta. That those are the examples. Pteridophyta, we have fans and hostels. Then, when it comes to spermatophyta, or those that flower, or that bear seeds, sorry, we have two groups. We have the gym, uh, gymnosperms, or uh, subdivision gymnospermatophyta and subdivision angiospermatophyta. So, angiospermatophyta, these ones flower. Example, uh, the maize and beans. When it comes to gymno, uh, gymnospermatophyta, these are the examples. These ones do not produce uh, flowers. We have the cycadels, lingoels, and class coniferales. These they are uh, cones. So in kingdom animalia, these are the examples. Codates or those having a backbone, that is the uh, phylum. We have class Mammalia, Aves, Reptilia, Amphibia, and Pieces. So, Mammalia include whales, 
bat and dogs. This one we've said they circle their young ones. Apes, examples are the birds. Reptilia are the reptiles. These are the snakes, lizard. We have the amphibia and the toads. We have the fish, including the shark and tilapia. Another phylum in Kingdom Animalia is the arthropoda. So look at the spelling. Not anthropoda, but arthro arthropoda. We have these classes. Crustacea include the crabs and the shrimp. We have the chilopoda. Example is the centipede. We have diplopoda. Example is the millipede. We have arachnida. Example is spider ticks. And then lastly, class insecta, we have the bees, housefly, and other insects. So these are not the only phylums or the phyla. We have other phyla. In kingdom fungi, the organisms are unicellular. Others are multicellular. Unicellular means it, it's composed of only one cell. And then they contain no chlorophyll. Most of them are saprophytic. They depend or they uh, depend on decaying, dead decaying organisms to obtain nutrients. Example are the yeast, are molds, and even mushroom. Examples. And some we have some which are parasitic, but most of them are saprophytic. Then on protoctista. The organisms are unicellular. Their nucleus and organelles are surrounded by membranes, hence they are eukaryotic. They include algae, slime molds, fungi, and like and uh, protozoa. Example is a, a protozoa. This is an amoeba. It has a contractile vacuole for removal of uh, excess water and others like oxygen can diffuse in as carbon peroxide diffuses out just across the cell membrane. Then we have kingdom monera and they are also unicellular organisms. They lack a nuclear membrane or do not have any bound membrane organelles. Hence, the name prokaryota. So the, their membranes or their organelles are not surrounded by any membrane. Hence, they are called prokaryotes. Example is the bacteria. For example, that one, the one causing cholera. So we have bacteria. Uh, their mode of nutrition can be autotrophic. That is, they make their own. And they can. they are those that are heterotrophic they depend on others for their for their food those that are autotrophic can be photo autotrophs that is they use light energy to make their own food they can also be chemo autotrophs that is they derive uh, energy for making their food from chemical reactions those that are heterotrophic are either parasitic they live on other organisms to obtain nutrients or can be Saprophytic, that is depending on dead organisms. So those are just the all the uh, phyla in kingdom Animalia. And then this is just a typical bacteria. The structure it has flagella for movement. All these are that is the structure of a bacteria. So we are done with that lesson. Here is an assignment for you complete and we shall meet uh, in the last lesson of classification one.